No, Switch Films is not the name of my hip new indie label. In fact, it is actually a mechanical keyboard switch modification that is hopefully going to improve the look and the sound, just like everything we do. They are really just little bitty thin pieces of, well, I actually make them in different materials, mostly plastic, that we're going to stick in between the switch. Now, I have got my GMMK set up right here with a bunch of different switch types. All of these are unfilmed at the moment. So we're going to go through and do, do some sound tests to see if it makes a difference. And and also figure out which switches need filming and which don't because not all switches do of course but before we do that let's actually come over here and I'll show you how to install them how to put the switch films on first so here is the switch film just one of them up close as you can see there's the big opening where the majority of the switch is gonna go and then the the little top part there let me see if I can pick this up there we go I'm gonna grab it I actually use my little like tweezers tongs for this it's a little bit easier I have opened an echo rose red I believe. I don't even know if this needs to film. I'm going to be honest with you, but I'm going to do it anyways, just because I want to compare. And it's pretty obvious. You just lay it on top of here, like so, as the switch is open, of course. Here's the top housing. I've already lubed this switch, by the way. There's only one way this can go, actually. It doesn't matter if it's this way or this way, by the way. Upside down, they're, they're both exactly the same. Slide it on there, and you can like slightly press down. You can touch it with your fingers, too, by the way. Slightly press it down to get it lined up. I'm having a bit of difficulty here. It's actually not wanting to go. There we go. Fell into place right there. And you will see as you put these on, by the way, that they will wiggle back and forth this way. They'll go like up or down. And you'll wonder like which way is correct because they're they're in the they're covering the right openings or whatnot. Well, when you put the top housing on, you will discover if it's the right way or the wrong way because the switch film will hang out past the edges of your switch if you did it incorrectly. If you do it correctly, it lines up perfectly on either side of the switch. So with this in place right here, I'm gonna just slide on my top housing. I'm actually gonna pick it up. It might be a little bit difficult for you to see, uh, but the switch film is in there. You probably can't see it all that well right now, but I'm just gonna press it together. Make sure it clicks in place right here. This was actually really hard to get together because I don't think this switch actually needs a switch film. I'm just being honest with you. So that is pretty much it. All of these go on exactly the same for just about all switches. Take it apart, put it on, you know, facing the right direction, which is really, really obvious because they're a huge opening for your stem. And uh, this opening right here at the very top, what is this purpose, by the way? RGB? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You put it on there, you just clip it back together. You have to be a little genteel when putting it back together just to make sure it doesn't get moved around in the process. But oh, look at that. Oh, I'm glad I did it this way. I did it incorrectly. You can actually see a little bit of the film opening up right here, pushing past the edge. That means I need to actually take this apart and just slide it back that way. It's on correctly, except for it just needs to move like a millimeter or two towards the quote unquote top of the switch. And again, it just wiggles around when you put it on there, you will feel this. If you do it this way and you notice a little bit of the film is hanging out, that means you just need to open it back up or preferably you, you know, you learn that it just needs to go this way. You don't have to reopen it. You just do it right from the start. Not like I did, but I'm gonna open this up and just move it back. You guys can't see it well on this camera, but it's not hanging over on the sides now. It's perfectly lined up in there. Again, it just took like a little bit of wiggling back and forth and you can align it to this side of the switch. I guess you could just do that right from the start to make sure you get it right and you're good to go. All right, now my switch is filmed. This one actually, I'm guaranteeing doesn't need it. So let's actually talk about which ones do and which ones don't. All right, so let's see what these films actually do and how to tell if these switches need it. So the rose reds are gonna be a good example of ones that probably don't need it. So I have my tweezers here, but you can absolutely do this with your fingers. If you grab the stem, the little plus signs, and you wiggle them back and forth, you will see that they wobble. This is okay. In fact, that's good. You want a little bit of room for these things to like wiggle around, right? It would be really, really hard to do keyboards if you didn't. But that said, I am going to wiggle a few of these stems on the different switches. And what we're looking for is not if the actual stem wobbles back and forth, but rather the top housing. Let me say that one more time. If the top housing wobbles back and forth side to side, it might be a great candidate for a film, which is going to reduce the wobble by making the top and the bottom 
fit together, snap together tighter. That's what we're going for. And I'm not going to lie, I just know this because I did this yesterday, but these tactile switches, the browns, these are Gateron browns, these are Gateron clears or whatnot, these are probably going to need films. So I am actually going to come in here, see if I can let you see this better. Ever so slightly, you see the top housing wiggling and wobbling around. The switch is in there nice and tight. The bottom housing is not moving, but the top is. You can see it just barely. It's like a little bit of wobble there. See that? The pink, the rose red rather, not so much. That top housing is not moving almost on any of these switches. But these Gatorons over here, wobble, 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 wobble. That one too. That one too. All these are wobbling. Just for fun, I put some greens in here as well. That one is wobbling. That one is wobbling. These are Glorious Pandas. No wobble. No wobble. These probably do not need filming all like whatsoever. These are nice and tight. Got around browns. Wobble. A lot of wobble. Look at that one. Definitely want to film that one. These are Kale Box Reds. A tiny bit of wobble maybe. I don't know. And then I put some Gateron Blacks, not vintage. A lot of people film vintage switches because they're old and they get a little bit worn out over time. And so they do become more wobbly and more scratchy as you use them over the years. So they film those, but these are new-ish. That one wobbles a little, so we might put films on these too. So that's how to tell if your switches need wobbling. You will actually do yourself a disservice, by the way, if you like were to film these glorious pandas right here. They're already tight enough. You don't want to do anything else to make this process like worse, right? There's no wobble. There's no need for films. Don't just think that, oh, it's going to make it sound better or feel better if I just film it either way because it won't. It'll be more stiff and it actually might not allow the switch to function. You might not even be able to like close them in there and you might damage the switches. I'm going to spare you the montage, but I'm going to take out these switches and film them and we'll come back and see what the difference is. So after doing a few of these, I remember why I hate this process so much. It's because just aligning it, getting on there is uh, it's super simple in theory, but you have to get them over the edge of the bottom housing right here, which is generally like the super annoying part. But okay, here we go. Worth it, I suppose. Maybe, hopefully, we'll see. Just an FYI, uh, apparently these do not fit kale box switches, at least. I was a little surprised. Wouldn't fit on the, uh, the bottom housing there. So maybe they make different ones for kale switches or not. I don't know, or I'm doing it wrong. Not sure. Could be either of the above, but I couldn't get them to fit on the, the red boxes here. Also worth noting, by the way, that you can get these in like different colors and stuff and different materials. I've only ever used the Kibo store uh, versions. I've ordered like three packs of them and they're super cheap. It's like less than $10, maybe like $6 plus shipping or whatnot. And you can get them in white, black, clear, and different materials. That's what I use right there. Okay, so I have filmed all my switches and you'll see that I'm actually missing two switches right there because these rose red switches, which by the way, do have the kale openers right here. You will need a kale specific opener to get that open. These don't work. These are too thick. The films are too thick and it won't close all the way. So I literally can't get them in my board. It's worth noting that they do make switch films, <clears throat> excuse me, in different thicknesses. I believe this is 1.125 millimeter. And they do make them a, a little bit thinner than this. You'll have to do some Googling. If you find that your switch is like a tiny bit wobbly, but you're a little afraid of it actually, you know, closing all the way, so you can't even get it in your board, you might order some thinner ones right there. And also, that also goes for like the KL box switches that have the different bottom housing. I'm sure you could look up films for these as well. I personally don't have any experience with those. I've always used these little, I don't know, MX style films, if you will. I'm sure they call them something different. I'm no expert in this. You'll have to do some Googling based on your switches. But for me, did not work with the Rose Red, so I will have to unfilm those right here. But that said, let's actually take a look at what did work. First up, the Gateron clears. Remember, here is my pre-unfilmed switch right there, a tiny bit wobbly. And I gotta say, it's still a tiny bit wobbly on these two films, these two switches which are filmed, but not by much. This one actually wobbles a tiny bit, but it's still way better than before. Same thing with the green switches. Here's the before unfilmed. Yeah, it's not wobbling a ton, but you can see it there a little bit. And here is the filmed. It's in there nice and snug same thing with the browns 
Here's the unfilmed. This one was like uber wobbly. I'm excited to see what this sound test brings. And here is the filmed. It's actually a tiny bit of wobble, but it's way, way, way better. Glorious Pandas, zero difference. It was already tight before. I did not put, I did not need to put the film in there, but I did. And it went in, by the way. It's a little tough to get in. Okay, you probably can't see this like at all, but these are cherry blacks. And the wobble improved a teeny tiny bit. Again, sorry, I'm like black keyboard black cherry blacks that's not much of a difference i'm not gonna lie so let's sound test these bad boys this sound check brought to you by the lovely and appealing doma key sa keycaps gas attack i believe is what they are called abs plastic first up the clears these are going to be unfilmed and these are going to be filmed unfilmed filmed Right off the bat, these just sound like a little bit more solid. There's a little bit of scratch on this one specifically. This one's just really nice and smooth. Greens up next. Not much of a difference there. In fact, I might've even gotten, a little, gotten rid of a little bit of the click which might be a bad thing. Glorious Pandas up next, unfilmed and filmed. This one actually feels a little stuck, I'm not gonna lie. I think this one just did not need films and I actually made it worse, right? Like it was so tight before and I added this, it added extra space and now I even went back and triple checked to make sure I did it correctly, by the way. It just sounds worse, right? And it feels worse too. Next up, Gateron Browns, unfilmed and filmed. So much smoother and better on this one. This is the biggest difference so far I've seen. This one's really scratchy. And last but not least, the Cherry Blacks, unfilmed and filmed. Those keys actually just sound a lot different. You hear that scratchiness on these? Way better. So to sum up, first, base everything off of your switches. First, determine if they're wobbly or not, period. And then how wobbly they are. And you might also check, are they a typical MX switch uh, casing style or do they have like the kale casing? We need the kale switch opener. You might choose a different thickness film based on that. And then of course your color, black, white, clear. There's probably some other ones in there. And then just get to it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that was helpful to some degree. I will leave links up here if you want to go watch some of my other videos. It would be greatly appreciated. I have one on these rose red switches as well as some uh, Gatteron Milky Yellows. Bunch of other stuff. Thank you guys for watching so much. Pete, keep news out. I've always wanted to say that. Out. Sounds fancy.